Okay, guys, let's see how well I can survive this onslaught of absolutely horrendous bugs and hopefully bring you guys an interesting video that's a little bit different. Now, with a lot of my videos, I usually think of a title by now, but I honestly haven't because this is more of a uh, thought video or a bushcraft experience, maybe a lessons learned. And uh, like I said, in that regard, it's kind of a minimalist approach, but not necessarily a minimalist approach in the amount of gear that I'm carrying, but in the type of gear that I'm carrying. So without any further ado, let's jump into small tools and why they make the count. So to start off with this, of course, got to back up a little bit in my bushcrafting experience. And if you've been around the channel for any time at all, you'll know that when I first started or for the first few years of bushcrafting, I used to carry a lot of bigger tools, bigger axes, like a 25, 26 inch handled axe. It was a two pound head or a 24 inch buck saw. And I used to be really on board with thinking that you had to have big tools in order to really do bushcrafting properly. And this video isn't a means to say that you don't need big tools because there are some crafts out there. And most importantly, there are some environments out there where the size of the materials you're gonna be working with do require larger tools. So if you're going to be harvesting, you know, big furs, then you would probably need larger axes. However, here in Alaska, that is not always particularly the case. Okay, so hopefully this is a little bit better viewpoint uh, because the fall wind is a little bit strong today. But anyways, so like I was saying, you know, I used to carry a lot of larger tools because I thought that that's how I would have to bushcraft and that's what I thought would need to be kind of the prerequisite for bushcrafting. The reality though, is that it's just not necessarily always the case. And as I've expanded and obviously practiced a little bit more, I've learned that a lot of work, I mean a lot of work, can be done with a simple 13 inch hatchet and a small pocket saw like this Gomboy. In fact, part of the reason I'm doing the video here in particular is if you look to the, to the right or to the left, these are both things, crafts, that I've made solely with these two tools, not using any larger axes, any larger saws, any knives, really anything, just these two tools to build these two things. And granted, some might make the argument that it could have been done faster with an ax, a larger ax, could have been done faster with a larger saw. And those might be fair points, but the reality is that within a reasonable amount of time, within just a few hours, I was able to collect the materials and build both of these particular crafts and while they're not perfect and I'm still working on them the main structure is still there and exists for both of them so that is what I wanted to drive home in this video is that so getting back to it a large portion of work can be done with very small tools the next part that I want to talk about is the part that I like most about using smaller tools like these uh, in place of larger tools and that is the creative problem solving. When I have a much larger axe or a much larger saw, of course it's easy to go to go out and just drop down a tree, you know, buck it up, do whatever you gotta do. But with smaller tools, you have to be a little bit more creative in the way that you go about efficiently and effectively dropping a tree or bucking a tree or doing things like that. You have to see how you can use that tool and ultimately what type of wood you can get away with. A lot of it isn't necessarily you know, using some specialized technique, but seeing you know, how can I make a smaller piece of wood do the same thing that that larger piece of wood would do for me, or how can I you know, search the woods, find a dead tree that has already been dropped, something that I might have used an ax to drop, find that dead tree, bucket with a hatchet, sorry, uh, limit with a hatchet, bucket with a small saw, and get the same type of wood that I would with a larger axe, but differently. So what this helps you to do is to learn your environment more, look for better opportunities to seize, and work uh, smarter, and like I said, creatively to solve problems. And that's why in my video that I did not so long ago talking about my survival training loadout, 
I mentioned not necessarily having something like a 25 inch axe, but you know, using smaller tools like these. And while some might see that as cheating, what I like to do with these tools is like I said, go out there and use my brain, learn how to solve a problem, to you know, craft things that I might not normally be able to craft with these tools, with these smaller tools. So that's the next part that I like about this minimalistic, you know, making small uh, tools count. I've become more of a fan of using smaller pocket-sized equipment because by and large, if you know what you're doing and you can put your brain to the work, you will often find that these tools will not be able to do everything a larger axe or hatchet can do, but that they can do quite a bit more than you might first them get first give them credit. And that's why I've become more of a fan over the past few years of using small tools, small equipment, is not only is it a challenge mentally to field and operate these tools and get the bright effects or the good effects out of them or to get the best effect out of them, but it's also that they allow me to do, I would say, a solid 85% of the work that my larger tools can. So ultimately the core of this message is that there's never a replacement for the big and you know larger scale tools. There will always be a use for them, of course, when building larger crafts than these two. You know, you may need those. But oftentimes, if you take a look at seriously what you are doing, you know, what you're trying to accomplish out in the wilderness, you may find that smaller tools can do a very good job. And like I said, they can't do everything, but they might just be able to do a solid 80, 85% of the work. And with that in mind, you know, coming out here, oftentimes, this is simply just the things that I carry, you know, these are the things that I need to have on me. Uh, and I can sacrifice having those larger scale tools simply because I just don't really need them. So that is what I wanted to cover in this video and go over. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and like I said, take another look at this. I know these videos don't get too many views, but for the people who are dedicated to learning bushcraft and learning different experiences from people around the globe, I thought it would be a fun video to throw my perspective out there and honestly explain, you know, why I've been carrying a lot of smaller tools and why I keep paring things down. Uh, you know, I used to carry a 16 inch hatchet, now I carry a 13 inch hatchet, you know? So it's kind of one of those things that I'm learning, you know, how small of a tool can I get away with? You know, what is the minimum size that I can carry but yet still have high effect with? And I think that this is probably the smallest I'll go with, but honestly, a 13 inch hatchet is still very small, very fieldable, and it can still do a lot of work uh, that you might be surprised. Okay guys, so that's all I had to share in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, God bless and I'm out.